Hey guys, Megan here, and today is Wednesday. We were out in the backyard working yesterday. It proves to rain the next two days, so we're trying to get as much done as we can. As discussed before, the grow house on the patio is going to be taken down, and the bigger grow house next to that one is going to be extended. So let's see how far we've gotten in regards to taking down the grow house on the patio. Okay, so here we go. Going into the girl house, I have this door open because it is hot in here. Let's see. So we've taken this piece off of the um, middle planter bed in the medium-sized girl house on the patio. And so this has the temperature gauge. Now we are in the big grow house and it's almost, as you can see, it's almost 110 degrees, I want to say. 115 degrees in here with just the door closed and the sun shining on it. Some changes have gone on here. We brought this um, planter bed in. We brought these planters in. Um, as you can see, my garlic is much bigger. Uh, we've um, topped off this bed I'm gonna clean this bed off um, let's see I cleaned up in here a little bit um, I uh, tilled in here and I put down some soil I actually was using this uh, round grass thingy trimmer and I ended up scratching a hole through the plastic but that's okay this plastic's coming down this year anyway and I'm going to invest in actual greenhouse plastic because this will be our grow house going forward um, stuff is happening here I don't know what it is I'd have to investigate a little further I think my cone flower is coming up I know I have garlic and onions in here coming up so I'm gonna let those do something nothing in here these things have to come out because the other planter bed is coming in here. We have some active strawberries. And I believe, I don't know, something's digging up in there. We're going to have to see. I think I'm going to lift these up, move the strawberries um, with the dirt, and then uh, put some hardware cloth underneath the box so nothing burrows in but we'll see um all my soil um i bought some grow bags i'll tell you the story about those later i think i'm gonna turn the fan on but here we go into the grow house on the deck oh it is hot oh see how much condensation is forming it rains in here shake it up it'll rain I always get my shirt wet when I come in here I'm gonna leave the door open while I record so here we go we have some strawberries this planter bed I have not pulled it up because I plan to move this dirt or like shovel it up and over and into a bed where my berries are but I can't do that until the bigger grow house has been extended or something will come and eat all my flowers so here we have some spinach some lettuce uh, some cabbages they're doing really well now the uh, only broccoli is bolting i believe this is another type of cabbage this one doesn't look like it's doing too well Ooh, there you go this one doesn't look like it's doing too well. My aloe plant's dead. But here we go. I have some mint growing here in this bag. I'm going to dig it up and put it somewhere else. Have some strawberries in here. Again, these strawberries are going to go where the berry bushes are. And I'll show you that um, in a minute. I have my two peach trees lucky i moved them in here because while i was in florida it dipped down to 17 degrees and um if as you can see they're budding see 
and I don't want my buds or my flowers to freeze and die this year. Last year it snowed in May. I learned my lesson. Um, I will not be keeping these trees out um, after April. They've already gone through their cooling time. And I'm going to leave them in here until the last possible moment. And then I'm going to bring them into the bigger grow house. Here we have the potatoes. Uh, nothing's come up here, but these potatoes are doing well. Those potatoes are doing well. Um, I've actually fertilized my peach trees with a little bit of um, rabbit manure, uh, a Job's spike, um, a Job's tree spike. I got a bag of Job's uh, uh, tree spikes last um, fall at the dollar store. They're about five bucks during the summer. But if you wait till the fall, they will sell them off for a dollar. So I got a 15 spike bag for a dollar. Um, I put one spike on one end, one spike on the other. Same to this one, one spike, one spike. I'm going to water them today. Let's see what else. My worm bin still hasn't been put up. We are going to put that on the list this year. One thing at a time, right? Um, here we are. This is a bed with um, Swiss chard in it that's almost two years old. Well, almost three years old now. Um, these beds were taken out. We reused the soil and we moved them out of here. We're trying to move everything out of here. <laughs> Um, my peas, I was on vacation and I guess the house sitter didn't know what to do and she didn't close it. So when it went down to 17 degrees, my peas died. It is what it is, right? I have a hard time growing peas. We thought we kept these alive during the winter. They would definitely come up. They had flowers. And one incident and they dropped it. I'm going to water in here. These are more potatoes. More potatoes. This is my lemon balm coming back up here. Got to weed a little bit. Uh, so we're going to move this. We have my broccoli going to seed. It's already flowered. I'm going to wait for it to go to seed. We have an insect flying around. Oop, it broke out. Uh, I have a Swiss chard that I transplanted from the planter that was here. There was just one, so I put it in here. Still alive. Got some spinach, more spinach, half the wheat in here. This shelving unit may go upstairs because in my last video, as you can see, I have so many plants upstairs and I can't bring them out until May. Um, middle? Middle of May? Middle of May, I think. Um, due to the weather in New York State. Okay, so we're almost done in here. As you can see, I'm backing up here. Most of the stuff in here are pots when the kids are done with uh, classes today. I'm going to have them bring all the pots into the big grow house. Um, and for now, uh, let's go see the berry patch because I did treat the berry patch yesterday um, and the uh, fruit cocktail tree in there with um, a copper fungicide along with my peach trees. Um, a lot of my trees, when I brought them upstate from had some disease i guess uh, i don't know what it was uh, leaves would go brown and it had insects and so i did a little research and they said if you treat them with a fungicide and last year since they were doing well and then it snowed and uh they went dormant again and so this year i thought uh, i would do uh, the treatment last year i did the treatment last year and now i did the treatment this year so they say when your trees start budding, this one is budding, see it? See it there? You should spray with a fungicide. I cut the, um, I think this is the plum side of the tree. I had to cut it off last year because it was totally uh, diseased. It had like this brown, sappy stuff. But um, the tree is recovering and hopefully this year with the treatment, you see how I gave it a treatment and it, it looks a lot better this year. Hopefully these bud as well. 
I see some budding here. So I treated it with the copper fungicide yesterday. And uh, I will treat it again when right before it starts to flower. So I've also taken the opportunity of adding some rabbit manure as fertilizer, um, some job spikes, and a little bit of plant food. And last year, I pulled all these trees from the pots they were in. And the pots were infested with insects. And um, so I got rid of that soil. I cleaned off the roots and I bought new soil and I replanted and they look awesome this year. Here are some blueberries that we topped off with some soil. All that soil from the um, grow house that came out of all the beds that we moved. Here are two beds that we moved. We're going to leave them here because the grow house is going to end here now. Okay, so we're going to leave them there. I have enough space to walk on that side um, and all around. So all of these are going to be encased in the grow house. This, I may top it off just a little bit more. This is a blueberry bush. Um, blueberry bushes really don't have babies that pop up everywhere. They kind of just keep bushing out. So I'm going to surround this with the ground cover of strawberries. This one and that one uh, in between these two um, right here. And I may put some strawberries back in here on one side so they can work their way over and continue to produce. Um, I was out here trimming a little. I'm going to trim these down because as you can see, they're, they have new buds and I want them to concentrate on new growth not old growth right so let's see if i can get a better view this is the new growth here right and this is the old growth here last year's so i'm going to cut there and so on and so forth it's got a baby growing here this is from a stem this stem right here goes in it has roots and it's grown a baby so that's awesome i love that Hopefully this one follows suit. It doesn't look too good to me, but I'll give it another week to bud, I think. Actually, uh -huh. yeah, here we go. There are some buds on this thing. Here we go. See it? This is an aronia bush. I'm going to cut it down to there so it can bush out from the bottom. Again, more berries that I'm going to trim right there more blueberries these blueberries are much bigger these ones back here this one and this one and i'm going to take this cage down and move it over there so that we can put some of those plants that are upstairs i will be selling some plants um, on craigslist um, if you live in the upstate new york hudson valley area uh hit me up let me know um yeah so when we extend the grow house we may just put the camera up and let you guys watch i won't say i think it just takes a long time to record and yesterday i thought i was recording and i was not and uh, we spent so much time moving the camera around <laughs> And there was no video on it. Okay, so here we are in the front yard garden. If you know anything about the deer, all my research has led me to believe that deer would not jump over a fence unless they know that there is a clearance. And their vision isn't good enough to scope how far something is from something else. So, last year, we came up with a plan when we put these trees in. These are some trees we have in here. As you can see, they're doing well. I also treated them with a fungicide and on the hillside sloping down, I put in a job spike on three ends. So I did it here. I think these are blackberry bushes. I mean, cherry bushes. Um, I did it for this tree. We have an ultra dwarf kefir and as you can see it's doing really well i sprayed it with the fungicide i put in some fertilizer spikes um same thing here this is another kefir 
yep pear tree see they're doing well i cut them down last year i pulled them out of the pots i rinsed off the um roots i put in some fertilizer i dug a big hole i think i have a video about that i'm not sure anyway so this fence is high let's say because it reaches my head but um yeah and in order for the deer not to jump in or try to jump in we planted these two feet away so they'll see a stick and they'll be not be very sure that they can jump right and then we planted these um a couple feet away which i plan to put another one here so they see the fence the second fence they see they can see i guess this pole and they think we're not going to be able to make it so they won't jump right here is another tree as you can see it's budding is doing well very happy i believe this is an apple tree i am not sure it had a sign on it we could not see the sign um we could not find uh what it was so i did the same to all these trees they're all dwarf trees i cut them down somewhat see here is where there was disease i cut that off and um i rinsed off the roots i soaked them for a night in a bucket i put fertilizer in the hole i dug a hole i put fertilizer in and this year and last year i treated it with the job spikes last year before winter and this year in the spring um and here is another tree i believe this is another pear tree again these trees are so old these trees should have bore fruit last year and they did not because they were in soil that had disease uh, I, this is another tree here i believe this is hmm i want to say another apple tree we had a sign you see we had a sign on it here and uh you can't see it because i didn't know that these tags were supposed to be written on with a stainless steel pointed pen that they're supposed to come with um so we wrote on them with sharpie and uh you know the rain and the age see this this branch here i may cut it because it rubs up against this branch this branch rubs up again against this branch so i may just take this whole branch out so we'll see what happens um it has crossing branches here i'm gonna try to do that see what happens maybe put a separator between them they say if you put a small separator between them they will continue to grow in that form so this is the biggest one we have okay and then here we go uh there's two feet or three feet I want to say one, two, three, maybe three and a half feet between the planter bed and the fence. See the fence? And the deer, they can see this. And they they feel like they cannot jump in here. So I've not had any problem with deer in here. Um, and bunny rabbits, I've not seen. So I don't know. Um, I may just extend this fencing but i'm not sure if i want to because first of all the camper will have to be moved we don't have a truck to move the camper um we've rented trucks to move the camper and for all the money i spent moving this camper around i could have bought a new one but anyway, um let's see so we are gonna put a proper door in here this year and i may actually um extend this uh because i i purchased a a few rolls of welded wire fencing so i may actually bring it out that way over and back right because now all this will be encased and this will be available for um yeah i need more space i have so much growing upstairs and not enough space and i think that extending this out enough space um um i purchased some grow bags and i think that's what i'm going to use this year a bunch of grow bags um i got these two i purchased a pack of five uh 
square one foot by one foot by one foot grow bags. I have these grow bags here. I was in Florida and in Target they had these grow bags. Um, they don't have them here. So I picked up the three that Target had. They didn't have a fourth. I purchased some online during the winter on Amazon, which is the best time to purchase anything on Amazon for my zone, right? Because gardening isn't a thing in the winter. So it's an out of season product. They're trying to get rid of what they have. They're trying to bring in new stuff. So I try to get what I can when I can, right? These I purchased for a fairly good price on homedepot.com. All of them except for, I think, this white one. My daughter started me off with this one. And uh, I just went on and on and on and bought more. So these will be moved as well. These may be moved either in between the beds here where there's space. There probably won't be very much space, but I'm going to put them on top put the rebar through them so they don't wiggle or move. Um, and then we'll have a space there and they'll go all the way up. It's all an experiment to me. If I can get something to eat out of it, it's awesome. So, yep, that is the tour of the grow houses and the plans we have. Um, this planter bed will stay on the patio. I want to see how long these can go um, on the patio. I'm going to put the cover back on, um, but I had to take it off because it was covering everything we wanted to clean out. So all this stuff will be stored in the shed where the chickens will be, which is another video where... All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much it for the tour of the grow houses and um, planning for the spring summer season. Uh, I'll come back at you when we have some other kind of progress. Um, we're only two people and uh, this week we're on vacation so we're trying to squeeze in as much as we can. Okay? Um, I hope you like this video. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you think someone else would be interested in this video, please forward my videos to them. Um, and uh, if you're not subscribed already and you're interested, please subscribe. Tick that little bell so you get all the notifications when I put up a video. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye.